Hi everybody, Dr. Friedman here. And this is an exciting week here in the Games as Storytelling class. As you know, this week is part of the third of the course where we're still working together as a class and we're still reading, playing, watching um, kind of communally. But this third of the course uh, is a response to student feedback what students asked for more of after the first third of the course. So students asked for more in-class play experience and they asked for experience with game mechanics that were innovative or interesting in some way. And so as it turned out, this was also about the time that Abria Iyengar came and visited our class and she was one of the play testers for her friend Spencer Stark's um, Alice is Missing, which was also at that same moment in the semester, winning a ton of awards, um, which it continues to kind of rack up uh, TTRPG awards. So I took a closer look at it. It had been one of uh, several contenders for a kind of week of play. And what I like about it is, first of all, it's incredibly innovative in the sense of it uses your phone. Um, it's an entirely silent uh, game played on your uh, texting messaging app of choice. It is a runs for precisely 90 minutes of gameplay, which means that in the two and a half hours we have across uh, the two classes in the week, we could get it done, including the about 45 minutes to an hour setup and debrief. Plus, it's set in a high school, which is not especially far removed from our students' uh, experiences, even though they are all um, college juniors and seniors. So I was curious to see how it was going to land. And so today was primarily set up. I have this game in three formats myself. I own a copy on Roll20, I own a physical copy, and I own a PDF copy. And so uh, this weekend, over Halloween weekend, I ran it um, as a Roll20 and Discord deployment. That game took two hours and 45 minutes. I had a stopwatch going the whole time. It went really well and it was a really amazing experience. Um, and so I knew going into this week that we were probably not going to have some of the technological slowdowns uh, in person that we would, um, you know, when we play online, but that because we're dealing with more people and a couple of different tables, that we'd probably slow down in other places. And indeed, I was right. We took about 55 minutes to do the setup uh, for the game. And that was with me having come in 15 minutes before class and set up all of the tables with all of the kind of cards and things that are needed. So I had one physical copy of the game and then I had printed out the printable versions of the game and kind of, you know, gone to the office copier and the big guillotine slicer. And um, I am totally intending to buy more copies of this game because I think it is one that inexpensive. It's about 21 bucks. Um, at the time of this recording, and it is that beautiful, and it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Um, Alice is Missing is about a box this big. And so, uh, but it works even with the kind of uh, printing out from PDF version. We're doing fine just far, so far. So we're running across uh, two days. We played 20 minutes of uh, the game today in terms of the actual 90 minute timer, which will give us about five minutes at the end of next class to check in, decompress, and listen to the voicemails. And recording voicemails was the thing I knew was going to take a fair amount of time. Um, we probably could have taken less time on that um, if folks hadn't actually also used it as the kind of designated bathroom break and things like that. Um, so that was also something that kind of pinched into time. Uh, I had told students ahead of time um, that they had access to the rules that they could look at on perusal. They weren't required to, but if they were had any anxiety, they could check on that. And I also put Becca Scott's um, 
Good Time Society, like eight minute kind of pitch for Alice is Missing back from its Kickstarter days um, as a initial introduction to the game. And I had also told students that they should bring their phone or another messaging device of their choice and that their tables uh, should kind of agree on a messaging system that they intend to use. I'll have more information uh, probably early next week from my students about what they actually chose and how it went. Um, what I can say is it worked really well so far. Um, the timer that is available from um, Renegade Studios um, that is designed for um, accompanying the play space of the game works well as also background music during the kind of setup stage. Um, so it's kind of playable in that way. Um, it's incredibly evocative and just really adds a whole lot to the actual game time as well. Um, so yeah, so I think it's going really well so far. It's got my brain worrying on the next iteration of this course, which along with the announcement of the latest Dimension 20 uh, mini season set in college, um, we are now reaching a real critical mass of um, high profile actual play, as well as a whole bunch of game systems that are touching on school related concepts. So the depiction of education in tabletop role playing games, I think is the way that I'm going to focus fire next time. But that's for a later discussion. But that was something that was on my mind today. Um, as I was, you know, spending the last 20 minutes of class kind of just looking I me mean, because I wasn't playing, I was there as the resource, and kind of being the the meta Charlie of the facilitator of this GM list system. Uh, but it went really well. Um, so more on Thursday about the game itself. Um, I think uh, this is just a kind of initial first impressions of um, why I chose the game, the occasion for which we're doing it, and kind of a little bit about setup. I'll talk more about details about Alice's Missing and how it works thematically and how it actually played in class uh, on Thursday. So until then, see you soon.